The sport of caving is practiced by only about 10,000 enthusiasts in the U.S. For many who visit and explore caves on a regular basis, it is their life's passion. The sport is often described by the media or the general public as spelunking, but cavers prefer to describe what they do simply as caving. Caving is far less commercial or publicized than other outdoor adventure sports, and it's less well understood by the general public. If you've never ventured underground or off the paved trail of a tourist cave, you'd almost certainly fail to see the appeal of crawling, climbing, and slithering through cold, wet, muddy, and totally dark environments. Very few people imagine that being fun. However, for those with a desire for adventure, a strong sense of curiosity about the natural world, and an interest in sharing unique experiences with other like-minded explorers, then caving can provide endless opportunities for new discoveries. Caves are one of the last unexplored frontiers on Earth, and those who practice the sport are interested in documenting these places and ensuring they are well protected for future generations to enjoy. The caving community can be quite protective of wild caves. Caves are especially delicate environments, and visiting them without the right gear and training can be dangerous. Caves aren't exposed to the elements of wind, rain, sun, and snow. They also don't have the same type and quantity of animal and plant life that exists most places on the surface, which can provide some level of natural restoration. The cave mineral formations in most caves take many thousands of years to form. As a result, any broken formation, any poorly placed footprint, or any discarded bit of trash will be evident to other cave visitors for many generations. Cave life is uniquely adapted to the cave environment and these species tend to be rare and may be easily disturbed. Because of the sensitive nature of the cave environment, many cavers are cautious about sharing cave locations with the general public. Cavers are strong advocates of leave no trace ethics, and for these reasons, the caver's motto is, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but carefully placed footprints, kill nothing but time. There are many types of caves, including caves formed in soluble rocks such as limestone. Caves formed following volcanic eruptions as molten lava cools, and caves that form from the melting of ice inside glaciers. Most caves are at constant temperature year-round, which usually feels cool in summer and warm in winter by comparison to conditions on the surface. Caves are often wet and muddy, and traveling through them usually requires some climbing and crawling. To prepare for these conditions, cavers need to bring appropriate clothing and gear that always includes a helmet and headlamp. Most caves also require knee and elbow pads and a pair of gloves for protection. Dressing in layers, wearing synthetic fabrics, and wearing supportive footwear with good traction are also good ways to stay comfortable and enjoy the trip. Although caving can be dangerous, by following a few basic practices, the risks can be mostly eliminated. Never cave alone and always let a responsible person know where your group is going and when you plan to return. While in the cave, your group should stay together and stay within the limits of everyone on the team. Cavers visit caves for a variety of reasons, but the most common is simply sport or recreation. Project caving involves going into caves with a work objective such as cave survey, science, restoration, photography, or cave rescue training. Getting started caving and learning how to do it safely and responsibly can sometimes be a challenge. Commercial caves are a great way to learn the basics about the cave environment, and some commercial caves and professional guiding services offer wild caving tours that take you off trail to crawl, climb, and explore. There are also many civic groups, university outing clubs, and scouting groups that offer wild caving opportunities. But the best way for most people to get introduced to caving is through local clubs known as grottos. Grottos are located in many population centers across the U.S. and these are internal organizations of the National Speleological Society. Many grottos have regular meetings and offer beginner caving trips. Taking your first wild caving trip with a grotto is the best way to make sure that you're getting the right permissions, bringing the right gear, following safe caving practices, 
and learning the importance of conservation and how to cave with minimum impact. Whether caves are on private or public land, experienced cavers recognize the importance of maintaining good relationships with private landowners and public land managers. Ensuring your group has permission to visit a cave and is following the rules and expectations during that trip is critical to keeping owners or managers happy. The organized caving community puts the highest priority on good landowner relations as a way to preserve future access to caves. If you're interested in learning more about caving, then visit the National Speleological Society website at caves.org. Click the button that says find a caving club near you to learn about nearby grottos and attend a meeting. The exploration of caves is an amazing sport and a way of life for many. Cavers are often misunderstood by the general public and even their non-caving friends and family, but they are simply explorers and adventurers who don't mind getting a little wet and muddy in pursuit of their passion. If you're interested in becoming a caver, or at least getting some more insight into what caves are all about, then be sure to do it safely and responsibly by first getting information and instruction from an experienced group such as the NSS.